The administration of Governor Willie Obiano of Anambra State in his bid to ensure even development of the 181 communities in the state introduced an innovative program, the first of its kind indeed, known as Community Choose Your Project Initiative. The initiative is geared towards stimulating inclusive growth across the state by extending developmental projects beyond the township areas to reach previously marginalized communities. This approach has helped in boosting investments in physical and social infrastructure to help the most vulnerable in communities pull themselves out of poverty. This model of development puts power back in the local communities as it allows them to take decisions on the type of projects they want in their areas. This is because no one knows a community's ambitions, burdens and aspirations better than the local people themselves and which projects that suits them most? This governor is a visionary and innovative governor. Um, the 20 million community choose your project initiative is the first of its kind in Nigeria uh, because this is an initiative that is geared towards development of the rural um, parts of the states. These communities identify the projects of their needs. Then the government designs the projects. The community chooses contractors to execute the project. And the community supervises and at the end of the day, the project is built for use by the people. I'm happy to let you know that uh, through this initiative, uh, His Excellency has built 181 projects in the 181 communities in Anambra State. And we say 181 communities this time around because our Nisha, um, is regarded as two communities. Uh, you have Odisha North, you have Odisha South. And Obosi is also regarded for purposes of this uh, exercise, regarded as two communities. You have Obosi Urban and Obosi um, Inland. So um, that brings it to 181. What may be the greatest need of one community may not necessarily be the priority of another. And so different projects ranging from market stalls, civic centers, sinking of boreholes, building of drainages, health centers, doctor's quarters, amongst others, are embarked upon by the different communities according to their greatest areas of need. This civic center is an existing civic center built by the community. You know, more than 20 years ago. But uh, the money was used to refurbish the civic center, repented, uh, changed all the doors, then um, changed the, uh, re roofed the place, it was re roofed, and uh, inside the civic center, the OCs were removed, the elevation was removed, and the whole place cleared and uh, tied. And of course, you can see the, the work outside here. That's uh, what do you call it, the interlocking. So it's just part of the 20 million naira. And uh, even the water, uh, the, the borehole that was sunk, 
the Boho services this place. And we also extended the services of Boho to Obumu, the other magnificent uh, edifice you saw outside. You know, there was first 20 million, there was another 20 million. So everything was sunk into this place. A lot of people choose town halls, those that didn't have civic centers. Some don't have uh, portable water. So they chose boreholes and then you reticulate through the town. And uh, some transformer for rural electrification. So they are happy and they are actually looking forward to the second phase they've already chosen. They're looking forward to the completion of uh, the second phase of this project. And His Excellency, the ZT Governor, has indicated that we are going to go on with this. Challenges come up every day, but uh, we use maturity to, uh, to solve it. Challenges come in the, uh, by way of, you know, the communities have to get together to choose a project. Where you have over 10,000 people, it's not easy for everybody to agree and say, this is what we want. The PG, the Igwe, the opinion leaders in the town have to agree. And even when they agree, after they've agreed, down the road, as the project is being executed, Wahala starts sometimes. That is trouble begins. One person will be saying one thing, another person will be saying another. But our interest as a government is to make sure that the project is completed. So we don't really get ourselves involved in the politics of the town. We, when, there's a, when there are challenges like that, we call both parties together and then let them know that the project must be completed. Very often in such meetings, we're able to find out who the culprit is that is standing in the way and, uh, and then caution them. This proactive and inclusive development model contrasts with the trend in some states where decisions are taken without necessarily considering the developmental priorities of the locals. Because of the close supervision and monitoring that we use for the projects. And uh, when other states are trying to copy, I, it's not copying that is the issue. Or the, the problem would be, would be, would they be able to do what we did? Because we set very strict, strict uh, standards for execution of the project, and anybody that tried to deviate from the set down rules, we did not allow it. That's why there's, been, there's no single case of uh, project abandonment and uh, we achieved 100% completion. He has done a lot in rural development. We've completed the first phase of this program. We are now into the second phase, which all things being equal, um, is hoped that by October, certainly before the end of this year, the second phase will be fully completed. Our target is October. Another special feature of the initiative is that the projects are executed by local contractors who are known by the benefiting communities. This has a double effect of ensuring that high quality projects are delivered while families and the local communities are empowered through the funds paid to the local contractor and jobs provided to the locals. The beauty of this initiative, which other states are now beginning to copy. You only copy something that works. You only copy something that is good. The beauty of this initiative is that it puts money at the rural level because the contractor is from within that community. And the people they are likely to choose the people that are, they are likely to choose to work are the indigents of that community. So the money, you see, during the time when things were extremely hard in this country, 
And Ambra State did not really feel the recession that much because of this initiative. The 20 million is pumped into the community through the contractor. Contractor buys from the wood sellers, pays the carpenters, pays uh, the masons, and all those people are from within the town. So the money circulates from one hand to another, and you have what you call velocity of money, which at the end of the day, that 20 million is not only 20 million work in that community. It ends up traveling and achieving economic work of over 100 million. So that's one of the smart initiatives the governor used in order to cushion the effects of a recession in Anambra State. The success story of Anambra State with regards to its different communities also hinges on the cordial relationship that exists between Governor Willie Obiano and the leaders of the various communities and the local government areas. The governor came on board and um, you know, um, decided that um, the town unions will be the, 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 the platform to reach the people. And he is doing that very effectively. And uh, of course, um, the town unions understand that um, the governor is doing well and we have supported him and we are supporting him with all our hearts. And um, it's a very powerful working relationship. In the 20 million naira project, for instance, that is the community chiefs of project initiative by the government, the government says that the government, uh, that this is the policy of the government that the traditional rulers, the PGs, will have to work together with stakeholders to choose the projects and to the implementation stage. And the gov I mean, the, the, the PGs and the Igwes understand this and they are taking it from there and it is working. It, it's a wonderful thing. It has never happened in the history of Anambra State that a government is now taking from the people what the people need. You know, here at what it used to be was the government doing whatever they wanted to do in the communities irrespective of whether it was what the people wanted or not. But now the government has said, okay, tell us what you want, those needs you have, and then we'll give you the money to execute them. This is wonderful. And the people have seen this as one of the, of the ways of um, ensuring, I mean, deepening participatory democracy. If Ule Biano is the best governor in Nigeria anyway, I have no reasons not to say what I'm saying. I do not know how else to, to talk about this man who came on board and made security of life and property his priority. And this security of life and property has engendered you know, other forms of development in Anambra State. Investors are coming in in their droves into Anambra State because there is security of life and property, there is security of their investments, then agriculture is now booming. Young persons among us are now seeing agriculture as a means of livelihood. You know, agriculture was like it's something for the old. But now the young persons have accepted that they can make very, very good living out of agriculture. Now you see, the transport sector, for instance, Obiano came on board and introduced a mass transit system. They call it Obiano or Willy, you know, where people who come from Anisha, for instance, to work in Oka, instead of spending 300 naira a day, they now spend probably 150. And the, the other 150 is now enough to, to put some bread on the table for the kids. A lot of things, you know, and then we talk about women, the affirmative action. So many persons in the government of Obiano now are women. Many commissioners, special advisors, you see the youths, some of his commissioners are the youngest in the country. So this guy is God sent, and I pray that God continues to bless him, and after the next four years, Anambra will be a land of glory. This governor did a lot when he came into office to um, cultivate a cordial relationship with the Igwe's. Um, the, um, first of all, Igwe's are very important in Igbo society. Initially, they used to say Igwe ways, but now that we have the Igwe's, we respect them. And uh, His Excellency uh, made sure that a lot of things he did. When he came into office, he said that Igwe's should be given respect by everybody and that 
if Anigwe has a problem, he told the authorities, the police, that they no Igwe should be carried to the police station. The police should go to Igwe's palace, interview him. Because that's how it's done in other parts of uh, the country. So, and in terms of the money stipend that we pay them, we do that religiously. Whether there's, a, the, even during the period when other states were not paying salaries, we make sure that we uh, we keep keep them happy. We're in close contact with them in terms of uh, um, supporting the programs they have. Uh, at different times during the year, the Igwe's have different things. They do Afara, they do Iwaji, etc. So we cultivate cordial relationship with them by um, respecting them showing our presence when they are doing something and if the government is doing something they are more than happy to also come and participate governor ubiano in his determination to carry all leaders along extended a hand of fellowship to the president's general of town unions while admonishing them to relate well with their traditional rulers The traditional rulers who are the custodians of the culture of their people are also carried along in this harmonious relationship with the state government. Governor Willie Obiano, from the inception of his administration, had recognized the importance of the traditional institution and collaborated with it in ensuring security, peace and progress of the state. At the 2018 seminar of the Anambra State Council of Traditional Rulers, the seventh in the series held at Oka, Governor Willie Obiano charged the royal fathers to carry anti cultism campaign to their various communities in order to dissuade youths from the vice. Governor Obiano said the state government took a proactive step in checkmating farmers' headsmen clashes and urged the traditional rulers to always maintain the peace in their various communities. Uh, under my watch, uh, you probably this every year since I came in. And I will continue to support uh, that initiative. Again, I want to seize this opportunity to thank all of you, all of you without exception, uh, for the support you have given us and the tolerance you have uh, shown on this uh, headsman challenges. Uh, I was like the fellow that saw tomorrow. I set up this committee of headsmen. 15th of May 2014, and they've been working ever since. Uh, that is exactly why we have not had any serious challenge with the headsman. And it's because, and it's because uh, you are supporting. Again, what we agreed long ago and what we are implementing is that if these headsmen destroy the farms, they must pay. And if for any reason our people kill their cows, we must pay. The challenge we have is that um, they will be paying, but they are not paying as fast for the farms destroyed. They are paying, but they are not paying as fast. On our own, we pay promptly for the cows we kill. You know, and uh, with uh, the the great yala here in Onitsha, uh, you know, has really helped. Uh, by God's grace, we will continue to to maintain this level head. Uh, I urge you not to take the laws into your hands, please. Uh, let have trust in what we are doing. This committee will resolve those challenges. You can see we've, we have had peace and we'll continue to have peace. Uh, we've not had any major challenge with them, and uh, but because we manage them properly, you know, our area surveillance uh, every two weeks helps us to discover new settlements where they are coming to, and uh, and uh, we send the mate Yala there to clearly warn that uh, in Anambra we can't carry AK-47 and they will obey. He solved that problem before it became a problem. Uh, 
uh, he set up a system whereby the he set up a system whereby the full and the herdsmen, if they kill, if they destroy our crops, they pay us. If our people kill their cattle, we pay them. This arrangement was achieved by working closely with the leaders of the Fulani community in Anambra State. And this has worked perfectly. There hasn't been any incidents of in, in the scale that you hear in other parts of uh, the country. So uh, that again tells you about visionary leadership and um, he has employed that in almost all the aspects. The Igwe's who, who just did the election, they were all supported. Everybody was supported. The grassroots are happy. And we intend to continue doing the same thing unless in areas where, where there's um, minor adjustments to be made here and there. If it's not broken, don't fix it. If you have a winning formula, stay with it. So we are happy with the, what you are doing, with the results. And um, I would say to His Excellency that he should um, continue with what he's doing because uh, Ndib will say, if somebody is doing what he says, Jidekij. So, Your Excellency, Jidekij. The Chairman, Anambra State Council of Traditional Rulers, the Obi of Furniture, Igwe Alfred Achebe, and the Chairman Planning Committee of the Seminar, Igwe Sunday Okafor of Obuno, commended Governor Obiano for the giant strides he has made in infrastructural development of the state and for his relentless support for the Council. But uh, since our government came on seat, I think it's been a special occasion for us every year yeah. because of the support he gives us. And he has been here every year that we've had this, uh, this seminar for the last four years. What an election for, for the governor. The debates were very robust. The campaigns were very, very active. But no single occasion did one person, a young number, strike another young number person or shoot a gun, or violence, or anything. We argue robustly, which is very peaceful and very respectful. I think as a model for other, other, other states to follow. I think that, uh, we, we have to congratulate our governor and congratulate ourselves with that. The election was peaceful, uh, the result was clear. Again, of the major contestants, nobody went to court to challenge the outcome. That's as I Model in community development, the 20 million naira uh, community development project. Uh, Ikuke and my brother, uh, the governor said a program for every community you get 20 million naira. You plan your project and you execute it. What the government does is to ensure that you have been done up to standard. And if you execute it successfully using your own local people. So the money stays in the community. Last year, we worked on the theme, political power zoning for peaceful election and all inclusive democracy in Anambala State. That theme, although lacked on constitutional by legal analysts, turned out to be a critical turning point in the political equation that gave the governor a 21 over 21 victory in the last election. To whom much is given, much is expected. Having achieved a massive support, the governor is expected to double his effort and support and surpass his achievements in the first term. Willie Obiano is a, a friend to Ndigo. He's a friend to the culture of Ndigo and their number. He's a traditionalist. He's a chief. So becoming a governor, uh, he has no choice. He has been dealing with us very cordially. And uh, I have treated Ndigo very, very well. I have increased the salaries of Ndigo, their welfare package. And, uh, uh, you know, loves culture and loves tradition. And, and we love him back.
National President Ohanez Ndibu, John Nyaungudu, and a special guest on the occasion, the Amayanabo of Upobo, Dandison Douglas Jaja, commended the Community Development Scheme of Governor Obiano while urging other states to emulate him. For hosting the first ever health summit of people's on restructuring of the federation on Monday, the 21st of May 2018, at the Kweme Square. Okay, may God bless you. Mm -hmm. I was one of those who um, witnessed the handover um, of battle from Peter B to yourself in the first uh, table. And um, from what I saw and what I'm seeing today, I think there is a tremendous change in the number. The Ohaneza leadership presented a plaque to Governor Obiano in appreciation of his role during his summit held in Oka. Governor Willie Obiano's target through the Choose Your Project initiative is that by the time he had completed eight years in office, every town in Anambra State would have significantly improved on their infrastructure. Thank you.